So over these past couple of days, I went through the process of transferring my domain, webdevcody.com, out of Google Domains. This is where I typically bought all my domains, but Google Domains is going out of business and they are being sold to Squarespace. So I wanted to transfer that domain ownership from Google Domains to another service called Namecheap, which is what I use for all my other domains. And during that process, I screwed something up and basically my website was down for multiple days. So I reached out to Twitter and I basically gave them the information about like what's going on. And it turns out that someone just recommended that I go into Namecheap, I turn off a setting, I turn it back on and save it, and that resolved my entire issue. So I do wanna give a quick shout out to I'm Luna Hey. They are the ones who basically gave that suggestion of turning off the Namecheap DNS, um, custom DNS, go back to the default DNS, save it, and then go back again to the custom DNS. And that actually seemed to fix all my issues. So I'm gonna put their Twitter link in the description of this video. Go give them a follow. And this is also a good reason why like know when you need to get help, reach out, ask a question. You never know when someone's going to mention something really simple that resolves your issue. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of how you can transfer a domain. It's actually pretty easy. And then finally, I'm gonna talk about DNS and how DNS kind of works at a higher level. So for transferring a domain, which I'm probably gonna have to do for this website, you have to go into the domain uh, of whatever name service company that you're using or service you're using. And typically there's a way to unlock the domains. Let's go to registration settings, go down here. It says domain is locked. So first of all, you have to unlock it. Okay, And so when you unlock it, you can also transfer it out and get an auth code. And then in your service provider, typically there's like a transfer option. So over here, transfer domains. I can type in icongeneratorai.com and click transfer. And then you should see an option and it's going to tell you if your domain is locked or not. By the way, I just happen to use Namecheap. This isn't sponsored or anything. I just like Namecheap. But if you guys have a better um, domain name service you guys like using, leave a comment below. Let me know. I'm not married to this service. In fact, it's still taking like 20 seconds to load a freaking page. So there we go. It finally loaded. So down here, you can see that the domain is unlocked. And you basically paste in that authorization code. You add it to your cart and you buy it. And that'll take about three to five days for them to basically take all your DNS settings that are on your old domain, they pull it over to their own service, and then you have access to manage it under your own list of domains. So now let's talk about how do I get my applications hosted? I typically host my applications with SST. So if I were to go to any type of project that I have, I can look at my SST config, and you'll see that I have a Next.js site construct, and I'm pointing it to this domain. So when you do this and you try to run your SST deploy, that's gonna create something called a Route 53 zone. Let's go over to Amazon over here. And Route 53 is Amazon's solution for basically setting up their own authoritative DNS server, right? So you have the ability to add in a bunch of different records like A names, C names. And what we're gonna do is inside a Namecheap, you can actually go into any of your domains that you own. For example, let's go to Thumbnail Critique. And if you go down to name servers, this is where you can set this from being the default basic DNS that Namecheap provides. And you can customize it and say custom DNS. So that's basically gonna say, whenever you look up your, your domain, it's gonna go to Namecheap's DNS server. And then that's gonna basically return this information. So the DNS resolver is gonna use this information to then route to your Route 53 zone. So over here, you'll notice that there is a record that has these four values in it. Okay, this is a name server record, and it has these four values. So when you first try to set this up, this will all be blank. And all I'm doing is copying those records over from Route 53, and then I'm putting them in this name cheap setting, and I can save that. So my issue that I talked about over here, the issue was I had to switch it back to basic DNS save it, and then switch it back to custom DNS and save it again. I have no idea why I had to do that, but it fixed all my issues. And so you might ask, why am I actually routing to Route 53? The reason is because that gives me the flexibility to create any type of records using infrastructure as code. So if I wanted to create more A names or C names, I can do that by just writing a little bit of CDK code, writing some Terraform code, and it, it'll automatically add in these records as I run through my infrastructure as code. All right, so now for the fun part, let's talk about how DNS actually works, because if you're not really familiar with this, this whole concept can be kind of foreign. Um, basically, if you have a person, so I'll just get like a user, call them Bob, and then they load up their browser, and they want to go to like, 
for example, webdevcody.com. How does this work? How does it know that when you type in webdevcody.com into the browser URL, how does it know what server it needs to go to? Okay, so the first thing is it's going to reach out to something called a DNS resolver. Okay, so a DNS resolver, um, from what I understand, it's owned by your ISP, and that could be like configured in your router or something like that, where basically you make a request to this domain, it goes to your ISP over here, and your ISP knows to reach out to other things. So in this case, we're going to say, ask DNS resolver, what IP webdevcody.com points to. And by the way, if I explain anything wrong in this video, just call me out. I don't mind getting called out. I'm not that smart. So let's go over to the next step is once you've asked the DNS resolver of, hey, what's the IP for Web Dev Cody? It is going to ask the DNS root name server. So if I go over here and put like a DNS, DNS root name server, it asks this, hey, give me the info on webdevcody.com. So this isn't just one server. This is like multiple name servers that are owned by multiple um, organizations and are kind of overlooked by something called ICANN. And ICANN is like a nonprofit organization that kind of just makes sure everyone's doing the things they should be correctly. But anyway, the DNS resolver, again, which is owned by your ISP, this makes a request to one of these root DNS servers, and that's going to return back um, information about where this webdevcody.com, this, this suffix over here, the .com, this is basically what dictates your top level domain, right? So there's .com, there's .org, um, there's .io, and based on the suffix, it's going to contact another set of servers called your top level domain name servers. So based on what your top level domain is, when that information comes back, let's just go ahead and send back some information about info on top level domain. That's going to contact the top level domain. I'll say ask top level name for, for info. And then that's going to again return some more info about top level domain. Now, if you remember back to Route 53, we set up a custom DNS, right? So these are the records that are basically going to get returned from this part in the process. So we're going to get like this stuff. Um, I'll just copy two of them, but hopefully you get the idea. So that top level domain name server is going to send back information for webdevcody.com to the DNS resolver. And then finally, the DNS resolver is going to contact my Route 53 name server. I'll say route 53 name server. And now this is where it gets back all the information uh, that I had custom set up, like my A name. So I'm going to go ahead and say like, uh, send back DNS records. And again, a DNS record is like that A name, the C name, the uh, MX records, if you're doing mailing, the text records, if you have anything else you need to set up. So we'll just go ahead and say, send back A, C names, TXT, MX, et cetera. Now, again, this is information that you have control over with infrastructure as code using SST or Terraform or CDK or whatever. And you can kind of add records as needed, and those should propagate to your DNS resolver. Now, inside of the resolver and your own browser, you typically have a cache. Okay, so stuff will be cached for a certain time to live. When you make these records, typically there's a way to specify how long these records should live. And it's kind of up to these servers and services to uphold that time to live. Sometimes it'll take longer than what you set for stuff to get changed. But anyway, it's going to cache that information. And then that's going to get returned to your user's browser. So finally, it's going to return cached DNS records. And now your browser can look at these DNS records and say, hmm, I'm trying to contact Web Dev Cody. I finally got an A record or a C name that tells me what IP address to actually invoke a service to get this web page to show up. And so that's going to make a request to the actual server. To make this simple, we'll just go ahead and say server and then by IP. So using that A record, it's going to say, you know what? I know what server I actually need to contact. Let's just go ahead and request that information down from that server. Um, request info using IP. And then your browser will show the information. But there's another thing I want to talk about, which is caching. So in your laptop and in your browser, there's caching as well, because all this obviously takes some time. This is a lot of network requests, and there could be a quite a long delay if you had to do this every single time you want to look up webdevcody.com. So there's caching built into multiple places. There's some in your operating system. Your browser has some. 
Um, I think there's somewhere else that I, I can't think about. But basically, there's like a lookup map that caches the name of your domain to the information that was returned from this whole process so that this can actually be very fast when you type in a domain in your web browser. And then over here, Bob is now happy. He can see this beautiful site that I have created and he can subscribe to my newsletter if this even works. I haven't even tested this. This might still be broken. So that is kind of the high level overview of how DNS works. Now there's some tools that I want to kind of explain before I wrap this video up of how do you debug DNS issues, right? So one of the ones I like using is called dig. So you type in dig, you type in your domain, you press enter and you get back information related to this domain. Now, to be honest, some of the stuff, I don't even know what the heck this stuff means. But when you want to check something specific, you can say dig, I can say web dev Cody.com a, and I want to do a short format. I think you can also look at like text records if you want to, but I don't really have most of those set up. It seems like A is the only thing I'm getting back. So that's just a nice little tool to basically get information about a domain. And that's kind of like what's going on behind the scenes when you load up your browser is that they are doing some type of DNS lookup um, to get that information. And it gets back this type of information as well. And they use that and they cache that so that when you go to Web Cody again in your browser, this IP is already there. So it just doesn't have to do all this lookup again. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this overview. I think it's good information. So if you did enjoy, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment if there's something that I miss explained. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to kind of hang out and talk to other developers, have a good day. Happy coding.